Okay, Rabotai, the life lessons that uh, our rabbis teach us. Pekavot, Perek Aleph, when the series Perek Aleph, Mishnah Zayim, must hear the lessons. Nitai Arbali Omer, another life lesson writes, Hachek Mishachen Ra, Ba'atat Chaber Larasha. Notice what it says. But it says, a shachen ra ben eber, it says what? Halchek, move away, move away. And then when it says rasha, at chaber la rasha. It says, don't be uh, friends with the rasha, don't connect the rasha, chaber like a friend. Don't connect. What's the difference between halchek and chaber chaber? So I saw Major Shmuel, he says like this, such amazing word. He says, you should know in life, when a guy is a big rasha, when the guy is rasha, rasha, when he's doing so, such bad things, you know, there's no way, how could I ever, how could I ever learn from this guy? You're going to stay far away, you're not going to learn from his ways. But a guy who's chetzi, chetzi, you know, yeah, maybe sometimes he's not a rasha, sometimes he is a rasha, sometimes he's like this, sometimes he's mediocre. He says, people like that, you got to be very far away. He says, let's say, heaven forbid, you have a real rasha. You're not going to... But a, a, a guy who is chetzi, chetzi, ah, so it's not so bad if this avera. I see nothing's happening. It's not so bad. It's not so bad. If the guy's doing crazy avera, even if he next to me, I can learn from him. He's doing he's a nutcase. The guy's eating a cheeseburger. He's a crazy nut. He's off his rockets. But let's say you have another guy. Oh, he's not doing something so bad. So therefore, over there, it says, move far away from that person. Because over there, you might listen. You might do. Sometimes you have a guy in shul. You have a guy in shul. Shachen ra. What shachen ra? I remember when I was uh, when I was newly married. I went to one of the knesses, whatever, and uh, and I saw one of my friends. I didn't see him in a while, and he's sitting next to a guy in the knees. And the whole entire time, I'm not kidding you. Yip, yap, yap, yip, yip, this, this, that. I say, I remember you. You said, thank you. What are you doing? What should I do? He's always talking to me. I feel bad. It's disrespectful not to talk to him back, not to answer him. Oh, yeah, for that, it's disrespectful not to answer. For Hashem's house to talk when the person's saying Kaddish or the person's saying Azara. That's not disrespectful for Hashem. It's, such a, it's more disrespectful for Hashem. You hear what's going on? So I told him, Habibi, learn from the Mishnah. What does it say? Halchek mishachen ra. The guy's yipping, yapping, and you can't control yourself. Move your seat. Move for a different seat. And he listened to me. Baruch Hashem, he moved. He moved. He, he, not even, he moved a whole different jewel. He moved. <laughs> I'm serious. True story that happened. He moved. That's it. And now he doesn't talk. Why? Why? Because he's saying, look, at least I'm going to shul. Yeah, of course he's going to shul. Uh, I'm going to shul. Of course, very nice. He's going to shul. So now he gets influence from the guy next to him. So be careful. Stay away. You can't, you can't. It says. By the the guy, imagine the guy's a cuckoo with a crazy, with a this, with a that. You're not even going to talk to the guy. You know? <laughs> Say, you hear what's going on or now? You hear the difference between and Atchaber Rasha? Good. And he ends off, What does that mean? Now, before I conclude with this Mishnah, I must say a very important point of Miriam Bad Bilga. I'll say this, I'll go back. is saying, don't be mebubal, don't be crazy in the head when things in your life or out of control yourself. Don't go crazy. Because if you don't stay calm, you're going to do nutty things. It was known by the Noda Be Yehuda. You ever hear of the Noda Be Yehuda? Noda Be Yehuda. One time, they were talking about how holy he is, how tzaddik, how chacham. A guy came into his room with an axe ready to kill the rabbi. And he said to the rabbi, Rabbi! You so kadosh, they talk that you so kadosh, right? I want you to jump out this window. It was on like a fifth floor. Jump out this window. I want you to jump out this window before I kill you. Because I want to see how holy you are. You're not going to get harmed. If you're so holy, you're going to jump out the window. You're not going to get hurt. 
You know what the rabbi tells him? The rabbi was calm. And the rabbi says, Listen, I'm going to show you more Kedusha. He says, What do you mean? Imagine the guy's ready with an axe to kill him, and the rabbi's talking to him very calmly. He says, we're on, the, we're on the top floor right now, right? He says, yes. He says, I'm going to go downstairs and I'm going to fly up from the first, from the ground floor, up to you. Stay here. I'll go down. And the guy said, okay. And he ran out. True story. And he went down. He went out. He ran out. He ran, went downstairs. He ran for his life. Imagine he wasn't calm at that moment. Maybe, maybe he'll do something back. Maybe he'll do all oh, this, that, 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 that. But he was calm. Be calm. Crazy situations happen in life. Shwaye, shwaye, calm down. This, that, 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 that. You hear what's going on over here? <laughs> Crazy story. And I'll just conclude <laughs> with one last point of Miriam Bat Bilga. Everybody knows at the end of the second sukkah. Listen to the Yisod I'm about to tell you now. The Yisod I'm about to tell you what was Miriam Bat Bilga. She went off the derech. Miriam. And she went, and it was the Yevanim time. She went married who? A Yevani, a Yevani, Greek. And they, uh, they, she went to the Beit HaMikdash. And she told him, Miss Bea, Miss Bea, look it, look it. When are you going to stop eating the people's money and not helping them? All the time they're paying money to buy a cow, to buy a korban, to buy this, to buy that. Now the Yevani are taking over them. How come you're not helping them? You're taking all their money, you're not helping them. I will tell you, listen what happened to the end of this story. End of the story goes, the Jews took over the Beit HaMikdash and they took Bilgah's father's Taba'at, Mishmad. Let me explain to you how the Beit HaMikdash worked. They had 24 groups in the Beit HaMikdash. Every week, a different, different group of Kehuna. 24, they would, weekly, they would switch. They divided in 24 groups and every group had his week. And every group as well had their own tabat. What's tabat? Their own ring. What's a ring? A ring on the floor they used to put in order to hold the animal strong, in order not to shake. They put his head underneath in the ring and he wouldn't shake. And they did shechita on the animal in order to make it easier. And each group had his own tabat, own ring for his korban, <laughs> the, the, the cut. They went to Miriam's father's Tabat, his group. He was the leader of the group. And they closed it up for him. They locked it. They locked it. He couldn't use it. And it was a bizayon because now he had to use somebody else's Tabat, somebody else's ring to put his korban. It wasn't it. So he asked, what did Miriam's father do? You want to punish Miriam? Punish Miriam. Miriam but Milga. So why do you punish the father? And you know what they said? They said because Miriam had to get it from somewhere. Miriam Bat Bilga, she must have heard these words. Oh, when do you keep on the Mizbech? When do you keep on taking the money, the money? When do you keep on stop taking the money and help out the Jews? Where did you get that from? Where did you hear that? Must be she heard it from her father or her mother that was in the house at the time. So therefore we have to lock it up. You hear what's going on over here? He says, not only that, how many times you have people, they come home, they get a tuition, ah, so much money, so much this, so much that. Yes, she bought that this, that. So what, what is the kid? The kid, get, he's a still a kid. He's still a 10-year-old kid. But he is his father from the age of eight, complaining, complaining, complaining about it. What do you think? The guy's going to hit. When he gets a father, he's like, ah, tuition, this, that, the Navi, the king, this, that. Where did it come from? Where did it come from? It had to come from somewhere, right? You don't just pop up one day and start speaking, too much, this, that. And lo aleinu vo lo alechem, you should know, heaven forbid. Heaven forbid a father could be, a person could be accountable. He's saying, oh, it's too much, too much, because I was complaining. You know what could happen one day? Lo aleinu vo lo alechem. A person could have an idea to have another child. Oh my goodness, it's going to cost me this, 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 this. Heaven forbid it, you won't bring another nishama, Hashem child to the world because of your statement. What a din v'cheshbon this person will have. It's not a joke. What a din v'cheshbon a person will have. I told you many times, parnasah of a child, 
look at a lady. When a lady, all of a sudden, she wants to nurse. Not all the time she has milk. The nursing, it's blood. This is blood. What happens? When a lady gets pregnant, the blood turns into milk during her nine-month period that the baby's inside. And after she gives birth, is already everything's taken care of. All the milk is there. It says, in life, a person has to know Hashem's teaching us a lesson. When you bring a child to the world, all the panasa is already there. You are just a picador. You are just watching Hashem's child. And then all the panasa is already his. You just take Hashem's neshama from the night and pulling it down and that's your child that Hashem gave to you. And He gives you all the support before He's even born. All the support that he, before He's even born. You hear what's going on? Therefore, be careful what you say. It could be held accountable. Be careful. People hear it. Should be happy I have another child. Now another gives. Hashem's going to keep on giving more gifts now. Whoa! But what do you mean? It's going to come, everything. This is the Mishnah's teaching.